Welcome to another edition of Spartan Spotlight on RubberRunSports.com. I'm John Moore, joined as always by Rob G and Papa, and the star of our show, West Springfield head coach Jason Eldridge. Is that a bright star, John, or is this a star different situation? Shame. <laughs> You're a comet. You're a comet. <laughs> <laughs> a coach, another tough loss. Yeah. Saturday afternoon, TC Williams, 21-17. Take us through it. So um, we walked in there with half our offense. KP didn't play. Uh, we're, you know, and the issue with Pete not playing, and I, I think I've said this before in weeks past, um, since we're on the same theme here. This is um, your starting quarterback. Correct. So who is a Division I correct. kid, right? Is that Jake is a viable option for us at quarterback. He, he can do the job. We all know that. But taking Jake from the receiving core right. to put him in affects everything. All right. And, you know, in this instance, they came out and, and you know, week to week, our issues are we can't put two, two sides of the ball together or even three when you counter the special teams. And this week it was the defense that came to play with their A game. And it was the offense that couldn't function correctly. And that was a large part to that. I mean, they weren't even guarding our slot receivers who are kids that are, you know, third and fourth on our depth chart, really. We're missing four of our six uh, varsity receivers that we had going into the year uh, slated to get legitimate time. So we stutter on offense in the, in the first half and we're, you know, turning the ball over here and there. But our defense is really holding it down. I mean, they couldn't really get their run game going. They had one run that was over five, six, seven yards, I think, uh, the whole game. And uh, we got a defensive touchdown for the first time in the first half. And we take a nine nothing lead, right. okay? And, you know, they come back with a couple of plays, we turn the ball over, they get a short field, they score a touchdown, we turn the ball over again, they get another short field, they score another touchdown, and it's 14-9 going into uh, the half. We come out in the second half, we make our adjustments, we're driving down in the third quarter to take the lead, we're inside the 40 yard line, moving the ball well, which we did in the second half pretty consistently. Uh, we get a really bad break, which is what happens when you're one and six. Uh, quarterback takes the ball, he runs for a first down, he gets hit by a couple guys, gets hit to the ground, the ground pops the ball out, and it's clear as day on film. Referee doesn't make a call. TC picks it up, runs 70 yards for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. So it's 21 9, we come back, we score. It's 21 17, it's kind of back and forth at that point. We have a chance late in the fourth quarter to score. We lose the ball on downs, heading in to win the game. Um, you know, there are decisions that we made throughout the game that you can look back and say, well, what about this? What about that? Here is what I saw out of my team. We had a tough week this week. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I lost my mind early in the week on, on the guys. Um, with regards to, I think, our discipline and the way we're approaching the day-to-day -day practice situation, um, it was a little bit out of character for me, although not completely out of character. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little, little bit out of character. Um, and, um, you know, I had to institute some things that I normally don't have to do uh, with my athletic teams that I've, I've been a head coach at. That being said, the kids responded. And I appreciated that from them. Yeah. We, we were a much more disciplined group this week. We minimized mistakes that we normally make. Um, on game days, we did have a couple, as I said, but I think that's more personnel-based than anything else. Right. Um, we looked like a higher-functioning team. We just can't buy a break. And, you know, we do little things here and there to cost ourselves um, opportunities. And here we are yet another week, and we gave ourselves a chance to win. And I expect this to... This is probably the way it's going to go for the rest of the year. My hope is that, you know, we had a really good week of practice after the initial stages of the week. I hope we did get better this week. And I think you're going to find us in games moving down the stretch. Whether we win or not, that's another right. story. If we can find a way to get a win, who knows? Um, you know, we're just trying to take it day by day at this point. So tough, tough loss. Tough loss for us. Well, you know, a lot of people don't see this side of, no. of coaching. No, they, they don't. They see, you know, oh, well, these guys get to go coach football. They, they get to do this. They get to do that. But they don't see the tougher side of the coaching. Yeah. 
How tough is it on you personally? I mean, obviously it's tough on the team, it's tough on the you know the situation, but how tough is it? And I don't mean to br- I don't mean to bring no, up any like negative not, things, but how is, tough is it personally? You know, I appreciate this show because I think people that watch it need to understand the other side of coaching. I mean, you know, it is real easy to be motivated and speak highly and be energetic and lively when you're six and one, which we've been before, uh, and, and running through uh, games on your on your way to a. Um, a playoff situation that that's an easy thing to do what's not so easy is to keep your discipline and your work ethic when things aren't going well and I think you know for me in 13 seasons as a head coach I I have won eight coach of the year awards at every level uh, from the district to region and state multiple times at each at each point and I, I, don't, I don't accept losing. I don't find it to be something that I, I work for, but here's the deal. You are what you are based on the personnel that you have, the circumstances that you're under. I mean, we have some infrastructure circumstances that we cannot control that affect things as well with these kids. And what you have to do is keep your mentality sound so that you can model that for your kids. Now, I'll be honest, this week did not do a very good job of that. And that's what happens in the ebb and flow of being a coach. Sometimes you are the perfect role model. Sometimes you are the worst role model there has ever been because your mentality gets to a place where sometimes you just snap. You're human. Yeah. And that's the way it is. Like any parent to their child, when they get frustrated with their kids, our parents did this. You know, you talk about it all the time, John, coming growing up in Philly. You know, you had a foot up your rear end yeah. when things didn't go well. I was also parented very militantly, where if I don't do exactly what I'm told, I'm going to get my rear end kicked. Yeah. So this is what you have to muscle through. And you also have to get up every day and continue to move forward. So my speech to the kids afterwards is not about this is what we did wrong. This is why we can't win. It's more this is what's coming up next week. And you have to kind of manage that mentally. And that's the hardest thing to do in life. I'm telling you guys this because you are getting a firsthand view of it with your job right now. And I know you see a lot more winning people than losing, but to be in a losing situation and have to to be the better person and keep working is a life skill that honestly, these kids will take with them hopefully and it will help them more than right. say the winning, if that makes any sense. A lot of times when you win a lot, when you face failure, you don't know how to deal with that. Yeah. I think these guys will be able to face failure directly and respond. I just do that. I mean, I feel that way. They're good kids still. They know I love them. I don't know that they know that completely after this past week, but I, I'm going to go on record as saying, you know, I wouldn't want to be with any other team right now. One and six, fine. You know, we'll, we'll make it through. Can't make the playoffs every year, I guess. I, I hate that, but you know that's right. that's the way it is. And if we put a run together, and John, I heard you picked us this week. I did. That's, Let's that's go to Super my Bowl. next question. <laughs> <laughs> so one and six. I unfortunately have been in a situation similar to this when I played at Fun Hill before I transferred See, to Fairfax. See, I have. I've never been here. And we had a game against. Um, I believe it was Georgetown Prep, who was one of our big rivals back then, and they were a power, right. and we came in there, and we did really well. So right. we used it as, we knew we weren't going to any playoffs or anything right. like that, but right. we got up for that game. I'll, you know, the expectations from the season aside now, right. when you have a game like this, you have Blake Braddock this week, everyone another is another writing team. you off in Absolutely. this game. The kids as they know should. It. Stop as, looking, as at they should. <laughs> looking at me. Stop looking at me. I, I, I was <laughs> pointing out anybody in particular, <laughs> but I'm just saying. This is where we are in our relationship. I'm out of here. No. <laughs> but I said in our Rubble Run Sports Show that you guys have too much quality of kid and coaches on that staff. You've had too many things go wrong that at some point during the season, you guys are going to pull off the game that no one thinks you're going to win. And I think it's this week against Lake Braddock. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, if we can put, like I said, two, three sides of the ball together, it, everybody's going to have a problem with us. And they just are. I mean, because, we, you know, we have things that create issues for, for people. And I have heard from multiple peers to try to keep my head up that are friends of mine that are like, look, you might be one in six, but you're not one in six, right? And I hear that. Yeah. You know, but ultimately, you know, my deal is you are what your record says you are. Sure. At the end of the day, 
I, I need our kids to enjoy the experience because here's the situation. You know, even getting into week 11, you know, 16 teams get in, you know, a week later, eight of those are done. I mean, it's not like you are, you know, and we talked about this after the game at TC. If you are on, if you are a kid that say goes through the Westfield program and you're, a, you're Evan Weister who makes it to the NFL and you play four years of varsity, you're looking at 50, 55 games total in your career. That's still a very minimum amount of sample set that you get to experience. Right. Yeah. So this is an environment that you will never forget. It's homecoming. It's our three mile away school that constantly looks at us like we're the ugly redheaded stepchild that they're yeah. gonna slap around. And I'll be honest, when you look at the last three contests between these two teams, they've all been close. Now, last year at um, Braddock, it was 35-28 late in the third quarter. And we lost Pete. <laughs> And we lost a couple other guys, and then the score got away from us a little bit with them putting on a couple scores. Uh, but the game was back and forth. The year before that, we split, right. okay, and lost in the playoffs in the second yeah. round of them at the goal line. This, you know, I, I don't think Lake Braddock staff is, a, they might be arrogant enough to tell their kids we don't have to worry about this situation, right. but they would be foolish to yeah. walk into our place thinking we're just going to kick you around yeah. because they still got to guard Daniel. Right. <laughs> they still got to do something with right. Pete. Okay. They yeah. still got to guard Najee. Yeah. We have a front four that they're not going to push around. No team has to this point. Right. And I'm going to tell you right now, Lake Braddock is coming in and I'm telling my kids, what, you haven't played good teams this year. Right. So it's not like we're not used to the high level. They're not going to present anything for us that we haven't seen. Sure. So, you know. Let's just see what happens, you know? And we have nothing to lose. What are we going to lose? This is the game. Yes. yes. This is the game. We're not losing any ground. No. We're already last And that student section at West Springfield better be out in full oh, force. Oh, they will. No, they, you know. Yeah. They're going to be a little riled up. But Good. Just, you know. well, yeah, you've completely turned him around. <laughs> you completely turned him around today. <laughs> now he's all fired up. Let's end on a good note. What do you think about waffles? Uh, wow. Well, <laughs> it's a <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I love a waffle because, but here's the thing. I don't like the soggy ones. No, no. I need the thick yeah. things that yeah. you get at IHOP. You know what okay. I mean? And I'm not into the fruit and whipped cream deal. You just I, want straight I syrup. I just want syrup and butter. This I'm is why that. if you've ever tried waffle crisp, the cereal, uh. do it. Yeah. You are you are going <laughs> to taste crisp. the buttery, syrupy crunch of a waffle in a cereal. Yeah. Waffle crisp. Waffle check crisp. it out. Waffle crisp. Check it out. You have a whole milk or skim? I do whole. Come oh, on, okay. Don. You That's do right. whole milk too. Look at Not you. anymore. You don't look like you do skim. I a whole milk. I made 350 pounds. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, well, Coach, always a pleasure. We will definitely look forward to the game this Friday and talking to you next weekend. Yeah. Um, Coach Jason Eldridge, Rob Giampapa, I'm John Moore. This is Spartan Spotlight, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Waffles. Waffles. <laughs>